and welcome to Shop Talk, the real estate show. I'm Ian St. Clair and joining me on this episode is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. He's the president of J-Man Seminars and international speaker of the universe. Make sure you visit his website, jmanseminars.com. J-Man, thanks for taking the time to chat with me. Ian, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. So you've known since you were eight that you were a speaker. What is the story behind that and why is it so significant to who J-Man is? Yeah, that, that's funny. So it's the, the story behind it is uh, when I was eight years old, my elementary school had a circus of sorts, right? Where we had a gymnast and clowns and, and jugglers and that. And so I was the ring announcer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Kirk Road Circus, right? I can still remember that moment. Uh, eight years old, coming out there, had a clip-on bow tie and, and the clip-on bow tie fell off. Oh. Okay fell off, which, which in normal, like you're thinking this would be like a, a moment in history that it was awful for me, but everybody laughed and I had no idea why. Cause I didn't know my bow tie fell off. And I'm like, this is great. I'm killing it out here. This is eight year old me saying I'm killing it. I'm doing great. And I went back off and, and the, the director of the, the program told me like your bow tie fell off. I'm like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People laughed. And so like that moment when, when I'd like to say, you know, nobody at eight year, years old says, I'm going to be a speaker when I grow up. Right. I mean, it, I didn't, I don't think I even knew what a speaker was, but what I knew is that I wanted to entertain, right. I wanted to be in front of people and, and that, that joy that I was able to transfer, but through my actions was what I was hooked on. And, and I think that, you know, this is late eighties, big hair, Metallica, rock star status. You know, I, I can remember that Christmas asking my mom, for an electric guitar because I was going to be a rock star. And, uh, you know, that soul crushing moment when you open a present that you wasn't what you wished for, you know, like the Daisy red rider kind of thing. Yeah. I opened my present. I'm thinking it's electric guitar and it's, and, and it's a, a folk guitar. I can remember that same Christmas, that same year, like, well, thanks ma. But I mean, what am I going to do with this? I can't be a rock star with this. You know, at the time, it's like just electric guitars, man. What are, I was crushed. So I, you know, while, while I, I didn't know I wanted to be a speaker, I knew that what I did that year and then after was things that involved people. You know, I, I knew that I wanted to work with people in some way. I didn't know what that looked like. Uh, what, what I did know is as my schooling progressed, all of my teachers wanted to suppress <laughs> or stifle or however you want to put it, my, my, my natural self, right? A lot of energy. I like to talk. I like to be the class, all of the things that I got in trouble for throughout my entire school career, if you want to call it a career is what sets me apart from the competition right now, right? A lot of energy. I like, you know, I like to have fun. I like to entertain. And so it's, I guess it's um, the short story long. I just made it. Um, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's it. I mean, eight, eight years old till now it's been a journey. <laughs> so you, you mentioned a circus and real estate yeah. in some ways can, can <laughs> resemble that. Why that's real so estate? Why, why be a motivational speaker in the real estate industry? Well, I, I am a real estate practitioner. Uh, I've, I've been uh, an associate, I'm an associate broker in the state of New York and I've been practicing, still practice for going on 16 years. I started in 2005 when I was 25 years old. So I, I, I tried to do what everybody told me to do in my life. I tried, like my dad said, son, you got to pick up a trade. Cause you know, I didn't, I didn't like school. I never liked school. Right. Yo, you got to pick up a trade. So like, I'm, I'm a certified tooling and machining specialist. I, I, I can program a, a CNC lathe milled laser, all of these things. Um, and I tried to do it, man. I went to college. I was going to go for mechanical engineering, but I interned at a place where they're like, Hey, stand here and work at this machine for the next eight hours. And like, I know you can't, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can't see, see me right now, but I can't sit still for more than three minutes, let alone eight hours. And I thought like, I can't do this. And, uh, it, it was a bad real estate transaction. Actually, they got me into real estate. 
Uh, and because I felt like I could sell anything. I was good with people. And I love that with real estate, every transaction made a difference in somebody's life, right? Every transaction you bring somebody home. And then that's where like, when I get jaded or the market's really hitting me, like it's kind of a challenging market with buyers right now. But when you can help somebody buy their first home and they can, they can turn that key and open the door. There's nothing better than that. There's no greater feeling. And I think in speaking, it's the same thing. When I can help an agent or a broker who was going to retire or who wanted to do video, but was couldn't, you know, couldn't get out of their own way or wanted to get on social media, but didn't know how to get started. All of those things really, you know, fill my bucket, if you will, of, of why, why I do what I do every day. So you get a little bit of both where you're able to, to mm-hmm. speak, to do what you knew that you wanted to do since you were eight, but also have that craft and, and help make people's lives better. So you're, you're actually able to, to double dip, so to speak. That's right. That's right. When, uh, yeah, when one's, yeah, I'm double dipping all day. You know, we, our, our real estate tagline is that we're your real estate superheroes. Uh, we provide better service through the mastery of today's technology. And I really feel that like in any market, we created that tagline during the 2008, 2009 bust where, you know, we were helping expired home, you know, people who had expired listings sell their homes or people that were short sale or people that were looking to buy foreclosures or going through foreclosures. And, and so it was really like, we came to the transaction and da, 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 like we're here to help you through this hard time. Uh, we are your real estate superheroes because it, it's so much more than a, than a business or a way to make money, man. We, we affect people's lives and, and in a positive way with every single transaction. Why is it so important to keep real estate professionals motivated? And, and how do you do that? Ah, oh, man. Well, it's, you know, like I want to say Brian Tracy said it, motivation's like bathing, right? It doesn't last, but you got to do it every once in a while. And, and it's, it's, it's the same thing with any business owner because people forget, like we do own our own businesses and it's tough to stay motivated a hundred percent of the time. Uh, I find the, the best ways for me to do it is to really break it down to like what matters to you most, right? Like it's not, you, you, you're not doing this because you want to make money. Sure. You want to, you have to make money to do things, but what do you want to do with that money? Right? Like for me, I got two boys, five and 10. I can tell you every single day, there's days I don't want to make a video. There's days I don't want to do this. I don't want to prospect. I don't, but I do it because I know in the end, I'm going to be able to have uh, the means to make a difference in the lives of my children right? When you break it down to its simplest form, it's like, what matters to you most? That's what you got to focus on every day. Not, oh, I got to get a listing. No, my, I got to pay for private school for my kids so that they, they can grow up and, and, and be successes. So I, I think really focusing on what matters most every day, especially, you know, when a market's great and things are selling, it's very easy to stay motivated. But when you write 12 offers for a buyer, you can both find yourself like, Oh man, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. I don't know. And you got to really keep hope alive because they look to you for inspiration and motivation and say, look at, it only takes one, you know, and and when you do find that one, it's going to make the world of a difference because that's going to be home. That's going to be, you know, you pull into the driveway every day and you're going to remember the struggle that it took to get there, right? The 13 offers that you wrote before you finally got one accepted. Like that's, that's what it's all about. You mentioned the struggle. One of the struggles is keeping people who get their education, who get their license to not leave the industry. Mm -hmm. How do you think that we can keep new or young agents from doing that? I think it all starts with the right education. Uh, You know, I think if, when we're talking, you know, I'm right on the cusp of millennial and X gen. So like I, I'm used to doing things online, but as the Z gen enters the industry, it's like, they're so used to doing things online. I think, you know, introducing them to quality education and coaching them and, and mentoring them. Like it's so important for them to find a mentor, somebody who is experienced in the business. And, and it's almost like a reverse mentorship, right? Where if you have somebody who's younger, who's good at technology, who's good at social media, who loves video. And you have somebody who's older that's been in the business 15, 20, 30 years who knows real estate. Like that's, that's a relationship where they can both benefit. 
And, and I think that's, it's so important for, you know, colleagues to help one another. It's like, we, we don't need, young people don't need a hand out. They need a, a hand up sometimes where it's like, you know, and I've reached out because when I see a young person who may be struggling in this industry, or maybe they're doing well, you know, I still reach out because I was that young person. I was the guy who started at 25 years of age and had, you know, experienced agents and I'm using air quotes, uh, experienced agents tell me, listen, kid, that's my listing. What are you doing? And I'd be like, well, that's weird because they signed my listing agreement. Who knew they were your client, <laughs> right? And, and, and I'd have to encounter that all the time. I didn't have the guidance. I didn't really have, like I knew sales, but I didn't know the real estate game or the, the, the real estate industry. And, and I wish I did have, you know, I had a manager at the time that I could ask questions, but he was very much a, well, what would you do in this situation, Jeremiah? It didn't really help me. He, he helped me to figure things out for myself. So I think mentorship is important, finding the right education um, and, and, you know, working together instead of, you know, collaboratively rather, rather than competitively. Like we're, we are competitors, but man, I share what I know with everybody, whether you work at it right next door to me in my town or you're across the country. It doesn't matter. There's enough clients for us. You know, there's enough food on the table for all of us to eat. Uh, you know, I have to, you have to come from a position of abundance and just, you know, the, the law of reciprocation is helping others. I get anything I want in life. If I help enough others uh, get what they want. How has real estate and real estate education changed since you started practicing real estate and being yeah. a motivational speaker? Um, well, let's say this real estate in 2005, when I started it, your dog could get a mortgage, right? It was, I mean, right. there's, there were dogs that had mortgages where, Oh, you could, Oh, you have good credit. Sure. You could afford this $300,000 house and you only make a thousand dollars a week. So, I mean, at the time, everybody could get a mortgage and houses were selling off the shelves. We, we knew it wasn't something that was sustainable. Uh, and, and then like from there, I lived through the bust, right? 2008, 2009, 2010, I moved from one company to another, which again, not a great time to make a move. Had I had my crystal ball, I would have said, let me stay where I'm at, keep my fees low. Uh, but, but I went to another model that had, you know, higher uh, fees for me, desk fees and stuff like that at a time when the market went kaput. Uh, so I, I had to work on the prospecting side of things and working expireds and, you know, and, and now we're, we're at a totally different market today and, you know, celebrating, if you want to say our one year anniversary of the pandemic hitting uh, the United States, I'm from New York, man. We're like we were, we were hit first and we were deemed non-essential in the beginning, like non-essential. We couldn't do anything. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't leave your house. And when you give an extrovert with ADHD, uh, <laughs> You tell them I can't leave the house. Like I was like a, like a, a, a caged animal. So things have changed dramatically, right? If there's ebbs and flows in the business. And right now we're seeing like a seller's market. Like we've never seen in the, in my going on 16 years in the business. I've never seen a seller's market like this where we, we list something and you know, there's double digit offers on almost everything. And, you know, and, and I teach the ABR course, the, the accredited buyer representative course, I know all the tips and tricks and it's just, if you have a buyer that's like minimum down payment and you're going to have to write a lot of offers. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that there's relief in sight, but it's going to be a year or two, you know, it's, so I'd say it's a realtor's market. <laughs> it's always a realtor's market where you, you got to stay at the top of your game. You got to stay educated, um, you know, and just focus on relationships. Like if my clients know that with every offer, I don't get lazy. Every single offer, I'm doing the absolute best I can and looking out for their best interests. You know, when you talk about like video, a lot of the stuff that I do, I present offers via video and tell the story of, of the buyer that I'm working with. Not in a, a love letter, again, with the air quotes, a love letter type of uh, format because that's illegal in our state and, and many others, but more of just, hey, here's the buyer, Here's the offer. They're pre-committed. They went to the bank. They work at, you know, the hospital. They're probably not going to get laid off, right? There's little, and I go through the entire offer that way just to set myself apart from the dozen or so other offers. Um, and then real estate education, I mean, I think in, um, even pre-pandemic, 
that if you look at the numbers, online education exceeds in person. But then the pandemic hits and you have a whole bunch of people who probably would have never taken online education because they prefer that in-person experience who then see, wow, this isn't so bad after all. Like, you know, they, they thought that it might've been like, ah, uh, you know, the, the stigma sometimes is that, it, oh, it's online. I have to, well, they weren't just introduced to the, the right education that really, you know, was, was uh, engaging entertaining if you will i like to say what i do online is edutainment you know like it's like we're gonna have some fun but you're gonna learn something too and and so i think that's how it's it's changed for the better and i think that we'll see that moving forward those numbers will stay high because if i'm a busy agent why am i going to get in my car drive to the real estate board or drive somewhere when i could do it for my pjs right a pants optional world and <laughs> it, it just, you know, do my education that way. I think it's, it's, it's changed forever for the better. You mentioned the change forever. What does the future hold? I mean, obviously it's hard to predict since we're still in the midst right. of COVID-19. I mean, it seems like we're, we're in, we see the light at the end of this COVID tunnel, but what, what does the future hold for real estate? Whether it's the next couple of months, but maybe the next couple of years, if you, put on your uh, predictive hat. Yeah. Let me grab my crystal ball one moment here as I shine it up. Uh, well, I think let's start with real estate. I, th- I think we will see, you know, depending where you are in the country and in, in your new construction, new construction builds and starts will start to relieve the pressure of the seller's market that we're in. Right. And I would say it's going to relieve the pressure for that move up market where somebody who's selling their first home has a home to move to. That's part of the, part of the challenge with people uh, not putting their houses on the market. They're like, yeah, my house will sell tomorrow, but what the heck am I going to buy? Right. And so I think we'll see some of that relief, relieve the pressure and interest rates. I think they're going to go up a little bit, but not enough to make a difference or make people go, you know, I, I should take action. Um, I think that's, that's the next year or so. And, and I think a lot of agents, if you're smart, a lot of, and, and I teach classes on this, But a lot of the uh, systems and strategies that you've put to work during the pandemic, you should implement into your real estate business, right? Our first meetings now and forevermore will happen via Zoom or some kind of virtual platform. Whatever our client is is familiar with and comfortable with, that's our first meeting. Because again, they're comfortable. They can do it from their home. They can do it in their PJs. We can get all those questions answered. It's still face-to-face communication, right? We're seeing each other. We're seeing getting all the questions answered. And then when they want to go look at homes, uh, the first stage is also going to be virtual, right? Let's, let's, let's check out the virtual tour. Let's check out the Matterport. Let's check out the neighborhood, right? If we can eliminate a property, especially uh, when there isn't a lot of properties out there, if we can eliminate a property based on uh, the house next door or its location, or it's, it's on a primary road, we can do all that virtually, you know, with Google street view and, and all the, the tools that we have. So I think that's clients are used to it. Agents are used to it. Um, so I'd, I think that'll continue on. And then I, I think with real estate education, you're going to see the numbers will still be high for online. I think we're going to see some, what I would call hybrid, right? If you go to a conference and I'm, I'm already seeing it as I get booked for conferences later in the year, we're like Jay, uh, we know you're really great online and in person. We want you to do hybrid, uh, which means they could have a camera in the room where we're, we're having a session, or there could just be another room where you go and do a virtual session. Then you have this, the second room where you're doing it in person. So I, I think every conference that you see for the next year or so will have an in-person registration and then a virtual component com, uh, component. Because even, you know, as we open up and as the states say, it's okay. That doesn't mean I'm confident in leaving my house. Right, just because the the governor said, "Yeah, you're good." There's a herd um, herd immunity, they call it. I'm like, okay, I still don't feel comfortable. Uh, you know, we're still going to have that virtual, and the same thing with sellers, same thing with buyers, right? So, so we have to have solutions to help them uh, feel comfortable because it doesn't matter what we think; it, it matters what our clients think and how we we can exceed their expectations and deliver exceptional service. Let's take a quick commercial break. And after we do, we'll discuss what and who motivates the motivational speaker. 
all things change. And sometimes, as Jay Mann said, it's for the better. That's definitely the case with online education, which is more accessible and convenient now than ever before. The CE Shop's online courses are state approved and available in all 50 states and DC, and they're even mobile friendly. Right now, you can save 25% on your online courses from the CE Shop with promo code SHOPTALK. All right, so who motivates J Man? Who motivates J Man? I mean, like I said earlier, the family does, obviously, right? Uh, every day that I wake up, uh, I go out, I, I try to stay, you know, active. I go out and do some, some kind of exercise outside, even though, even through the winter. Uh, but I, I follow a lot of motivational people like, you know, David Goggins or like, you know, people who, a lot of stuff I talk about is like stepping outside your comfort zone. So those are the people that I follow. And then that's the life that I try to live and lead by example. Right. I, I can't tell you like, look at winning the wake up is important. And then I sleep until nine o'clock. Right. <laughs> like there's nothing more, more frustrating for me than the people that, that do that. I wake up at four 30, four 30 to five every day. I'm out doing stuff. Um, but I, you know, I, I try to follow different podcasts and, and people, uh, that I are doing things outside the box. I, I don't like normal things. And, you know, if I had to put a theme to my life, it was like, being authentic is what has helped me be where I am today. Being authentic and then never really being satisfied. Um, you know, like people, oh, you're, 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 I'm never going to be a success because I'm, I'm always hungry, never satisfied. Like, it's okay. How can I do better? How can I raise the bar? You know, even with the, with virtual, the virtual stuff that I do, it's like, I'm always trying to raise the bar. Even if somebody says it's great, it's like, there's always room for improvement. Focus on progress, not perfection. How do you step out of your comfort zone? Uh, I, I try to do things that scare me every day, right? I, it's like you, you reached out to me uh, yesterday and said, hey, you want to do this? I'm like, yes. I, I, I've, it's almost like an improv kind of a thing where like whatever the suggestion is, the answer for me will always be yes. Uh, even if it does scare me, if it's something I'm doing for the first time, you know, uh, dur the pandemic hit, I hadn't been in a uh, delivered a session virtually more than twice in my entire speaking career. I was an in-person speaker. I love the people. I love the energy. And I had to, I hate the word pivot, but I had to pivot as <laughs> it's used so often <laughs> lately. Right. I, I had to like say, okay, we can't do things in person. I'm going to do it virtually. And then I thought, okay, what, what makes me really uncomfortable about it? How can I make it better? And I continuously do stuff like that. Like I thought, okay, my, it would probably be really hard to be a virtual MC. It's not even something that really exists. Why don't I try that? <laughs> and so I, I thought like, if I was a virtual MC, what would be the very best thing I could do? And, and I, and I carve this little niche. I do a lot. I do that for uh, virtual conferences and, and so, you know, so it's doing the things that I don't really want to do all the time uh, is how I step outside my comfort zone. What was the most memorable real estate purchase or transaction that you have been a part of over the course of your real estate career? Yeah. So I can remember a uh, single mom, three kids, we're doing our final walkthrough and she starts crying. And I'm thinking, cause the house isn't really in broom clean condition. I'm like, okay, don't worry. We'll get it, you know, I'll have my cleaning guy come. We'll ask for a credit. She's like, no, you don't understand. She says, you know, me and my kids used to be homeless. And we used to sleep in our car. And you just let that sink in for one moment. Like as a parent with children to think that you'd ever have to sleep in a car. That, like that's the definition of home to me. Right. And so that when, when I, when there's days where you have that client who's yelling at you for something, or I always think back to moments like that, where, you know, touched your heart. Like you, like, I know that she's in, she's in her home right now. She, she's may not remember me. I mean, she should, but what she remembers is that she's home with her kids, right. Rather than sleeping in the car. And I, I was a small part of that, right. I helped in, in, in making that happen. 
and and I have a lot of examples like that where it's we change people's lives with every transaction. So I think if, if you're listening to this or you're watching it, like that's what you have to keep in mind. It's like every transaction we change somebody's life. Period. Seeing and hearing how emotional you are. Yeah. Is 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 that what I mean that's that's what it's all that's what it is, right? I mean that's that's why people get into the business and that's why people should stay in it if they if they get the chance to uh, become an agent or depending on where you are a broker like in Colorado um, mm-hmm. that, that's what it's all about right it I mean it is because I, I could sell anything I, I feel like I, I could sell anything on the planet I choose to be in real estate because of the difference that we make. And, and if you're not passionate about it, you don't wake up every day excited about what you're doing. Like maybe you should quit. Maybe you should go, go take my tooling and machining job that I didn't want to do. Go do something, go do something else because you know, sales is nothing but a transfer of enthusiasm. And if, if you don't love what you do, people can't see like, you know, I'm showing houses on Sunday. My client's like, man, you work seven days a week. And I'm like, yeah, isn't it great? Every day I wake up and I have the opportunity to bring somebody home or to, to do some kind of session where I can help an agent provide better service to somebody in a, you know, develop that relationship and help them be better, do better and, and, and take, take care of their clients. Like I think everybody at the end of their days, right. When I'm 50, 60, 70 years old, I'm not going to hope that I, I list another house. I'm not going to be like, Oh man, one more house. Can I, I'm, I'm going to be happy of all the lives that I touched all the people that I, that I help make a difference in their lives. And I think, when you break it down to its simplest form, what should motivate you is that you live the life worth living. And I think if you're in real estate, you have that opportunity. You should feel blessed every day. Um, you know, even during the pandemic, man, it's like I had 83 speaking engagements in person that fell like dominoes. But I was thankful because I'm like, man, I'd be on the road right now. But instead, I get to have these moments with my children. Right. I get to have these memories with my kids, you know, running through the yard and, and in front of the house and playing soccer and doing all the things that I wouldn't be there doing. So it's like, be grateful for what you do have because you can realize how it can change in an instant. What's the most random moment of your real estate career? <laughs> most random. Man, we have so many. Uh, I, I had a client, this was right around the time when we were creating the tagline real estate superhero. Because we're still trying to find out what we would do, what 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 were we we what did we want to be known for? I had a client that stepped off. You know when you have those uneven front steps, and it was like, watch that second step. She stepped off, rolled her ankle, pretty bad. I I heard a pop, but she had a a husband that wasn't very sensitive to what was happening at that moment. He was just like, suck it up. We got one more house to look at, and. I'm like, look at guys, forget about the house. We can reschedule this. It doesn't matter. It'll be fine. He's like, no, we took off. You know, we took off. We got the kids being watched. We went to the next house. Okay. And she, she, she's like, well, if you, if it's good, we will, you know, I'll come in. And it was nice. Okay. So the husband and I carried her through. Okay, this is a two story, like wow. one, her, one arm around my head, one arm around his head. And we had her, her legs and we carried her through the house. She's like, I love it. I want to write an offer. Uh, we ended up writing an offer the next day because she had to go to urgent care and then in, into surgery because she did break her ankle in a couple of places. Oh, wow. <laughs> but she didn't stop telling the story of like, my agent, he's like a superhero. He carried me through the house because because I had my my ankle was broken in him. So that's kind of like if, if there was an origin story. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite an origin story. Yeah, you know, it's yeah, you know, it's like that's why we were the real estate superheroes who carried it through the house. Uh, but that's you know one of the more random moments because they don't teach you that in in your licensing class. Like, what do you do when your client breaks her ankle on the front step? I'm like, ah, oh, I'm gonna get sued. All these things go through your mind. Uh, but it was, you know, it turned out for the best. Cause again, I'm always going to do what's in the best interest of the client. You want to cancel something. You want to not see something. It's not about the money, right? I, 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 I value relationships over transactions any day. 
if you could go back to the beginning of your career and change one thing, what would it be? I'd find a mentor, just like I said earlier. Um, I, I was very much a young, a young guy with a chip on his shoulder where I was like, okay, you guys don't want to help me. Like I succeeded because they told me I couldn't. That makes sense. Right. Tell me, you know, the best way to get me to do something is just tell me no and tell me that it can't be done. And then I'm going to say, watch me. And and that was like the, and I kind of alluded to it in the beginning where I said, you know, the rainmaker in my office was like, listen, kid, that's my listing. And the more you told me that I'm like, okay, now I'm, I'm going to prospect this guy's listings for the rest of my life. Not that, you know, not his actual listings, but like if they expired or anything else that that was off market. So, you know, I, I would grind down the chip a little bit, fill it in, if you will, and, and, and be, be humbled enough to ask somebody who was more, it took me a few years before I came to the point. And it was when I made that transition to another company I, and I went to somebody more experienced and said, Hey, this market's tanking. Let's work together. I'm good at door knocking. I'm good at technology. I'm good at social media. You got 34 years experience. Let's work together. It wasn't like, it wasn't even like a formal team relationship. It was just, we would work together, you know, door knock stuff and, and then split stuff and, and do it that way. But had I done that earlier, I think, you know, my, my career path would have been, my curve would have been more of straight up than less of a gradual increase. Yeah. So mentor, I went back to little, little J man, (laughs) the old 25 year old punk. (laughs) I would say, look, look at man, just sit down, be humble, ask for help. Stop being a jerk. And I, I wasn't a jerk to people. I was more like, you know, the conversations you have with yourself. I think those are the, the most important conversations you could have any day of the week. Absolutely. Well, J-Man, thanks for taking the time to chat with me about this. It's been a fun and uh, enlightening conversation. And I, I, I hope people got a lot out of it. So thank you for taking the time to do it. Well, thanks for having me. My pleasure. for this episode. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed the talk, you can subscribe to us on your podcast player of choice where new episodes will automatically download like magic. Please also leave us a review as it helps others find the show. Shop Talk is a production of The CD Shop. 